do you love to for life here bringing guys a brand new video so uh, a lot of you guys have asked me what are my favorite tribes how would i rank the tribes in general and overall and i'll be 100 percent honest i like all five tribes uh pretty well it's really hard for me to pick well actually no i it, it doesn't it's not hard at all for me to pick my favorite you guys probably know which tribe is my favorite and you guys can probably guess what's my least favorite depending on how many of my videos you've watched now that being said i still want to do this because you guys have been asking and i thought it'd be fun to do and you know it's just all my personal opinion okay now this is not about the best tribe okay this is about my personal favorite okay so and, and that can be down to any reason whatsoever and you know it's just my personal opinion so if you have a different list or if you have different opinions on the different tribes please leave your comments down below i'd love to hear why you guys like one tribe over another or why you guys might dislike a tribe and such so yeah <laughs> okay so first and foremost for number five if it wasn't obvious it's the danians i i don't really particularly care for the danians i'm gonna be honest there's a there's a lot of reasons, but it's mostly because I've never been a big fan of their gameplay mechanics, particularly, uh, especially back when I was a kid. Whenever I was a kid playing this game, I couldn't make heads or tails of what I was supposed to focus on. You had Hive, you have uh, the Infection, you have Graveyard uh, Manipulation and how much they want to be in the graveyard themselves. You have all that, and... I'm like, that's three different mechanics, they don't tend to work together, and then on top of that, they have the, like, second most amount of different elements, like, you know, overworlders tend to have a lot of elements together, and so do Danians, it's really weird, but, uh, the Danians, due to that, I would always just end up playing them as an elementalist deck, uh, and it just wasn't as good as playing them focusing on a hive, infection, or graveyard, uh, compost, as people call it. That being said, I've bit I've grown a bit more appreciative of them as I've gotten older and able to actually understand the mechanics and realize that hey, I don't need to build a deck that uses all three, I can focus on one. <laughs> I was a stupid kid. Oh god. I got some funny stories to tell of Chaotic as a kid. So yeah, I, I just really did not particularly care for them in terms of gameplay now in terms of their tribe and everything i absolutely love their style they're so cool as i've mentioned before i love their names they're, they're really fun to say like odu bathax machinaz they all have such cool naming schemes uh you got alexia she's pretty cool i was really looking forward to azil she was looking awesome hopefully she's still gonna be just as awesome whenever they release fire and stone i can't remember what her effect is off the top of my head but uh i I've been trying to branch out a bit more. <laughs> I've, I've been really avoiding Danians. I know you guys really want to see a Danian deck profile. I do have a Danian deck built, and I just I just want to figure out if it's good or not. <laughs> I'm scared to post it because I don't know if it's good or not. But uh, I digress. So yeah, that's uh, that's my thoughts on Danians. I think they're pretty cool. I don't really particularly care for playing them though. Like in all honesty. Now then. I'm not going to lie, the next two slots could be switched around at any time because I can't decide which I prefer. <laughs> and I kind of went with how I did for arbitrary reasons that I'll explain here in a second. So next up for number four, we got the overworld. Okay, I know I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to make so many people mad about this. I love Max Sork, okay? Don't get me wrong. Interest is cool too. She and Takinam, I, I'll be 100% honest, I had a crush on it as a kid. Uh, then again, I was also like in my preteens and every hot looking girl on a TV show I had a crush on instantly. Okay, so <laughs> But however with that being said uh, The overworlders are a really cool tribe, you know, Maxor is awesome, Nadrin's awesome uh, Interest is awesome They're all awesome, but however it, it's I, I feel they're really kind of one note They specialize in healing and they got all their different elements and stuff but uh, I feel like their own, like, tribe mechanic, you know, because all the tribes have their own unique abilities. And with the Overworlders, it's a support system. And I feel like support was never particularly great. Like, oh, you get five extra, you know, courage or something for every guy near you. You know, I, I was really looking forward to see what they would do with Fire and Stone. Because with Arctis, they started going, oh, hey, you get, you get the elements nearby. It would be really interesting to see how they would have gone with that. Um, I do believe they also branched out with some other things, uh, but like, 
I, honestly, I ended up just playing them as like elementals, focus decks, and I they can be really annoying too with the healing and everything. But however, I, I, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they got some really cool characters, and I love their uh, play style, and I, I love playing the Overworlders, and you know, Maxor and Frafto and Interest and all them are super iconic, and I love them all. They're such great, cool characters and everything. But, however, I cannot deny that, personally speaking, I prefer over, I mean, I prefer Underworlders a bit more, <laughs> okay? So, yeah, Underworlders are in three right now. Again, as I said, you can kind of switch them around, but because uh, it honestly depends on my mood but I generally speaking do prefer the Underworlders a bit more Kaor was my first ultra rare creature I ever pulled and so I played Underworld heavily <laughs> I actually still have my original Kaor and I love uh, like just in general Kaor as a character I would argue that Kaor is like the best developed character from the TV show uh, it's just so interesting to see how he goes from being this uh, you know completely in total hard head and he, he border like he I, I maybe it's just me but i i can't help but see him as a bit of a cinderay in the, in the tv show i'll be honest like he won't admit that he likes kaz as a friend <laughs> it's hilarious but uh uh i digress the underworlders i love their play style just a sheer amounts of damage so much cool artwork and stuff. Kaor is such an awesome character, and I really wanted to see how they would have gone with his story, and of course with everybody else's story in the TV show. Uh, I could talk for days about how much I love their designs, they, especially the ones that are like fire spirits and stuff. They're so cool, and I generally love their playstyle. I, I only wish that uh, they had a... I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it, uh, but like... I'm not a big fan of how some of them have recklessness and stuff like that. Uh, I, I really, really would have liked to see what Mordek would have done. My biggest issue is that Underworlders, like, tend to be split up. Like, you know, you you got all the fire ones and you got some of earth and water. Now, granted, I know that the earth ones, uh, especially uh, the ones that focus on the earth and stuff, tend to be the guys who follow Lord Von Blute. And that's why they're so different because, you know, you got the fire guys who typically follow... Uh, Kaor and the Earth guys typically follow Lord Von Blue, and that's why they're so different because you're supposed to play them with each other instead. But I don't know. That's just something that's kind of always irked me a little bit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I do really generally prefer the uh, Underworlders over the Overworlders a bit. So it just yeah. It, again though, you can pretty much switch them out anytime because it's really tough for me to pick. <laughs> they're both great tribes. Oh uh, boy. Next up, we got Mepedians. Mepedians were my first uh, tribe, okay? So whenever I signed up for online, I saw the commercials, and I'm like, wow, that looks pretty cool. I never got to play Yu-Gi-Oh, you know? and Because I, I never, I, even though I had all the cards, the same thing with Pokemon, I think I had some magic cards too, uh, and I couldn't play the game because there was no local game store nearby, and I couldn't play with anybody. And my friends were all like, yeah, it's too geeky, yet they would spend hours playing video games like I did. Um, so whenever I first started seeing the ads for Chaotic and stuff, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to check this out, and I go and make a sign up and everything, uh, using, uh, my aunt's old email that she no longer has, so if they do bring back the old accounts, I will not be able to get back into my old account, which is annoying, but <clears throat> I digress. So, uh, and I looked at the starter decks, and Mepedians just kind of called me. I, I love dragons, they're so cool, and Mephidians were the closest thing to dragons, little did I know we would eventually get dragons, uh, eventually, uh, unfortunately we never did because Fire and Stone never came out, but oh well, <clears throat> I'm gonna save that for a rant for another day. Uh, the Mephidians are just so cool, I love their uh, play styles, you know, you got the invisibility gimmick mechanic and everything, and then more importantly for me, what really solidified my love for them was... The, the war beast the war beasts are so cool especially blazotan the epic war beast he's so cool and i i spent so much of my allowance trying to pull blazotan buying silent sands and instead of instead of getting him i got vivarf after vivarf after vivarf um but <laughs> uh you know the war beast mechanic it just really helped solidify it for me and i i absolutely love playing my pettians. and I, I kind of hate myself for selling my iflars I do want to try and get another one uh, but there's apparently a guy who goes around buying them the instant they pop up on eBay but I digress uh, so 
yeah, Mepedians are very near and dear to my heart. They were my favorite tribe of the original four. And, you know, there's only one tribe left. You guys know which one it is. But first, I want to give an honorable mention to the tribeless. Because, as you guys know, Ursus is my favorite character, like, my favorite creature card. I, I've i done a whole series dedicated to trying to pull him. <laughs> and I, I absolutely love this card. And I love the tribeless creatures in general. I really wish we would have gotten more of them. Because it's an interesting, uh like what's the word i'm looking for i uh, kind of like wheel to throw in there you know you got the five tribes soon to be well was planning to be six and then you got the tribeless guys who are kind of like the uh, uh a rogue or i don't know what i don't know how to uh, describe it but they're the uh, oddity in there and they were just so cool and i really really wish we would have got to more of them i know like people are scared to death of Ariak ever getting printed <laughs> i don't blame you guys one bit but like I just absolutely love these cards, especially Ursus. Ursus is my number one favorite creature. If I ever do, like, a top ten favorite car creature cards, you guys already know Ursus will be number one. So, yeah. Although, number... It, it, it'd probably be a tie between him and Prince Medina, champion of the guard. In all honesty, it's really tough for me to pick. And then, of course, number five, we have... The only ones left, the Morellians. I absolutely love the Morellians, okay? Then when, I remember when I first heard about them, I first saw the designs. I think the first one I saw was Raftab. And I'm like, wow, that's so unique. That's so different from everything else. And then we got more of them. And I remember just, because I I had crap luck for pulling cards as a kid. I only ever pulled three Ultras, Heptad, Aparu Jungle, and Kaor as a kid. I never pulled anything other than those. And, uh, I mean, granted, two of those three are good cards. <laughs> but, uh... Uh, did I say party very party jungle? I don't know. Anyway, so, yeah. I, I had crap luck as a kid for pulling uh, ultra rares and stuff. And a lot of the really good Morellians, especially early on, were ultra rares. You know, like Raftab, Benabaku, stuff like that. Now, granted, they weren't particularly good, but they the better cards came out later. And I, I remember just pawning over the... like they, they had a full list of all the cards and you could see what you had and didn't have. And the only Morellian I had for the longest time as a kid was this Torque until I somehow managed to pull a Rich Dag, and I absolutely loved it. The, these these creatures are so cool, uh, be, and they're inspired off of uh, you know the uh, deep ones from the Lovecraftian lore and mythos and everything. They're they're take heavy inspiration from H.P. Lovecraft's work, and it's partly because of when I was a kid that I was reading into the Morellians and their inspiration and everything. I found out about H.P. Lovecraft, and I started reading about his uh, books, reading his stories and everything, and I absolutely love uh, the H.P. Lovecraft Cthulhu mythos, as people like to call it. It's so, so cool and everything, and I owe my love for that mythos, for that, uh, you know, a cosmic horror to the Marillions. Uh, they really are just so unique, so different. Their their designs are all so insane and weird looking. Uh, their lore is something that I am very fascinated about. I want to know more about these guys. What made them so uh, mad about you know the other tribes? I know that like you know uh, we've heard two different stories about why they were behind the doors, what happened. But as of everything in chaotic and everything in param, we don't know the true story. You know, it's just like how uh, there's that really big argument of oh, where the Kafka was originally found, overworld or underworld, and blah 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 blah. Why did the overworlders and underworlders hate each other so much? Nobody truly knows, except for obviously some of these guys, or probably some other people who are super old. And it's just really interesting with the lore. I want to know how their society works, what the deep minds inside looks like, what the, what Param used to look like back when all six tribes were living in relative harmony before the war broke out and everything. that It's been going on for eons, if not, you know. And it, they're just so cool, and I, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Uh, I think that they're just really really interesting really fun to play uh their lore and their artwork and designs their names are so fun to say too by the way like raftab benabaku Tab, makadin uh, uh oh darn it what was uh 
uh, Raftoa, I think that's actually an overworlder, but you know, it's just so cool. And then you got like Raftab, who actually was my favorite as a kid, and I even named my RuneScape character after him. <laughs> I, I absolutely could talk about these guys for hours on end, and whenever I do eventually get around to doing lore videos, which I plan to do, I probably will whenever we get around to doing a Merlion's. <laughs> It'll be very, very fun, and I'm looking forward to it. I think I got one more picture out of this. Yeah, Gnar Rash. Uh, so, I, I don't know what else to say. I just absolutely love these guys. Their artwork, their design, their lore. Uh, my only real issue with them is how, uh, you know, with uh, Chaotic, one of the really big things, one of the really cool things that they would do uh, in the story is they would show that war is not black and white you know the overworlders would be the good guys in one episode and then the bad guys in another and that would be applied to every single tribe equally except the Marillions when they were introduced they were just pure evil and I don't particularly like that because it kind of feels like it's a fly in the face of that now it could be explained that Ayn had such a tight grip over them because we do know that he was a complete and total dictator and had a complete and total fascistic rule over the Marillions and likely even brainwashed a couple too because apparently the, I've heard I've read conflicting things but apparently the brainwashing abilities of the Marillions was not something that they actually have it was something that Ayn had and then granted to the other tribe to his other tribe ma uh, mates which is something very interesting, and I don't know if that's true or not. I've heard conflicting things. Going to have to look into it, but especially whenever I get around to doing lore videos. Uh, so it, it's just something very interesting, and I really, really wish that they would have exposed about on that a bit more. And they seem to have started to do that towards the end. You know, uh, one of the last episodes before the series ended, uh, uh, Peyton and Tian met... I think it was Tian, uh, met a friendly Merillion who just wanted to live his life in an oasis in the Mephedian Desert. He didn't want to be bothered by anybody. <laughs> I think he and Tian even started talking philosophy or something too, because hey, why not? You know, uh, I, I really wish they would have done more of that. And, you know, uh, then also getting into the civil war that broke out between the Merillions after Ayn fell. It would have been really, really cool to see more of that as well, but you know, again, of course, the series ended before we could get into that, and I, I just, I could talk forever about these guys. I really could. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on the tribes? How would you rank them? Uh, do you agree with me? Do you not? I'm sure no one will. I'm sure that this is, that it, everybody's lists are going to look completely different. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. See you all later. Peace out and goodbye.